<laughs> and uh, so <laughs> when we got up after uh, somebody wanged the machine gunner up and in under the, in the doorway of the house and heaved a grenade in the door and went in and got halfway down the hall and Leo Grandin was coming in from the back way. I don't know how he got there. And then we went out and shot up a fire truck and, and a German truck. And then I got hit in the eye. A sniper popped out a window and hit the wall ricocheted in my face and got my eye. And then Fleming got hit in both legs, so I, he could see and I could walk, so I carried him back to the beach. And uh, one of the scout cars got in between us and, uh, and the town and sort of went along beside me while I was carrying him for quite a way, so. Uh, the beach was a shambles. The tanks had been coming in and were disabled. They were, they couldn't cross the wall. Uh, the bodies, the bodies were many on the beach. The wounded were there. Being scared, there's no question about it that you're scared. You know, you're, this is the first baptism of fire for uh, everyone in that regiment and everyone in the whole brigade. And uh, it's, uh, it was a uh, pretty intense baptism happening all at one time. And the regiment fought many important battles after that. And I'm sure that uh, it happened to, to everyone else who joined the unit. Their first exposure uh, is, uh, is not a very pleasant experience. Vaguely now, I'm saying three or four o'clock in the afternoon, we had a brigadier who ran the white flag up because by that time we'd had several, several hundred dead and wounded on the beach. And uh, the white flag went up. The Germans kept firing for some reason unknown to me and others. They did not accept the fact the flag meant uh, surrender. And I tried to swim out to the boats when they decided to surrender. I couldn't swim any farther. And an e-boat came along, and I was very pleased to see him. And they took me on the e-boat and banished me and gave me a cigarette, and for you, the war is over. The Scottish suffered 75% of their casualties in the first hour on the beach. Of the 553 officers and men the regiment embarked for Dieppe, only 51 returned to England. 27 of those were wounded. The Essex Scottish suffered 531 casualties, more than any other unit in the raid. Well, the effect was unbelievable and uh, impossible to forget. It came suddenly, I think, late in the evening. And I remember going downtown early in the morning of the day after, and Willette Avenue and the side streets downtown were just filled with people. Well, they, we knew then that the Essex Scottish had been at Dieppe, and that there had been uh, a lot of tragedies, and everybody was waiting for news. That was a, a morning that I will never forget. And because I was a member of Parliament, uh, they felt that I would have special knowledge of the battle at Dieppe, that I would have special news about the wounded and the maimed and those who lost their lives. Of course, I didn't. It took some time before that kind of news reached Windsor. But it was a morning never to be forgotten. it would take two years for the regiment to rebuild. They returned to the war in 1944. As part of the second division, their job was to push through the beachhead established by the invasion of Normandy. At Yves, near Caen, bitter fighting cost the regiment over 300 casualties a total blow to a unit which had lost so many at Dieppe. For the rest of the war, the Scottish would never be up to full strength. After Reefs,
they were sent to the Battle of the Falaise Gap, helping encircle an entire German army. Crossing into Belgium, two companies of Scottish cleared a German coastal gun battery at the town of West End. The grateful townspeople named the street leading to the position Essex Scottish Land in honor of the regiment. From here, they helped capture the port of Antwerp, then fought through the Scheldt estuary, clearing the route to the port for Allied shipping. Across the Scheldt, armored scout cars of the vanguard of advance west across the South Devlin Peninsula. Continuously harrying the stubbornly fighting enemy, valuable ground is gained in the race to free the approaches to the great harbor of Antwerp. Advancing through the Netherlands and into Germany, they fought the Battle of the Goshkalkar Road. Here, a British unit had failed to advance on the right flank of the Scottish. It was not long before the Germans discovered this weakness and overran the regiment. For some 24 hours, brigade headquarters believed the whole regiment had been lost. When the situation stabilized, scattered elements of the unit began to reform. At a loss of over 200 Scottish, the road was secured. One week later, Major Fred Tilston, without tank support and outnumbered three to one, led a company in the attack on Germany's last line of defense west of the Rhine, the Hochwald Forest. He won the regiment's second Victoria Cross. Another name is added to the Dominion's Roll of Honor. It is Major Frederick Albert Tilston of the Essex Scottish Regiment, Canada's 11th BC. In second Canadian Div's attack through the Hochwald Forest, the Essex Scottish were given the task of clearing the northern sector. Major Tilston led his company across 500 yards of open country under the heels of our own barrage. He cleared out a machine gun nest single-handed and was first to reach the objective. Although three times wounded, he carried ammo to the company on his flank and directed the complete plan of defense. Thus, he writes another glorious page in Canadian Army history. The Essex Scottish headed the Canadian column again for the attack on Groningen. And in early May 1945, they entered the German village of Oldenburg, days before the end of the war. Despite the intense action in which the regiment had frequently taken part, it had developed a gentler, happier side, unknown by most in Windsor and Essex County. When the Scottish were not participating in battle action, they were often involved in other dramatic action, usually to great acclaim. Warriors turn troopers as a frontline fighting unit leaves the FDLs to don the grease paint. The regimental entertainers of the famous Essex Scottish present a command performance. Originally presented under the very nose of Jerry to their own unit only, the fame of the troopers spread. The show was so well received that the GOC requested it be brought to the rest of the army, much to the army's delight. A proud regiment, as distinguished in play as in the field. The long list of battle honors is witness to the ability of that line unit from southern Ontario, the Essex Scottish. After a brief time as part of the Army of Occupation, most of the Essex Scottish returned to Canada. For Lieutenant Colonel Bruce J.S. Macdonald, however, another fight was just beginning. A group of captured Canadian soldiers had been murdered by troops of the 12th SS Panzers. Among them had been several members of the Scottish, most notably Captain Brown, one of the regimental padres. The commander of the 12th SS Panzers, Kurt Meyer, was to be tried as a war criminal, and Bruce MacDonald, a lawyer, was selected as prosecutor. Meyer was found guilty and eventually sentenced to life in prison. Again, the men of Windsor and Essex County had distinguished themselves in combat. Of the many who received decorations, Les Dixon was the only Canadian in the Second World War 
to win the military medal three times. The regiment has seen no active service since the Second World War, although individual members have taken postings with regular force units, United Nations peacekeeping forces, and Arctic installations. The regiment has changed, however. In 1954, they were amalgamated with the Kent Regiment. The name was changed to the Essex and Kent Scottish Regiment. The two had fought side by side many times before, and during the war, many of the Kents had enlisted with the Scottish. They continue to actively train, yet hope the call to war will never come. I do not like war. I do not like war as such. Unfortunately, there are times and conditions and perhaps faults of people that bring it about. Fighting is not, fighting is not pleasant. War is a hell of a thing. It's an experience that, uh, that uh, nobody wants to go through, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, we won't have to go through another one. And certainly everybody hopes that their children and grandchildren won't have to go through it. But uh, the way things are and the way human beings are, uh, there have been times when uh, there have been several wars that have been the war to end all wars, and they haven't been. And uh, uh, in all likelihood, uh, the last war won't be. And uh, we should do absolutely everything we can to avoid that happening. But uh, at the same time, we've got to be, if it does happen, we have to have some degree of preparedness. It has been said, peace is the dream of the wise. War is the history of man. The long history of Essex County clearly demonstrates from the Detroit militia to the Essex and Kent Scottish, we have depended on the loyalty of our citizen soldiers, the farmers, businessmen, laborers, and others who, when called to Canada's defense, have beaten their plowshares into swords. Every two years, these citizen soldiers gather in Windsor from all across the world for a reunion. They gather in an atmosphere of camaraderie to renew old friendships, remember, and celebrate a common pride in their regiment. We socialize, we get together, we, we, I have to admit, we tell the same old stories, the same old jokes, but there's a feeling today that prevails among those that are left right now. I'm not talking about the guys who were there in 1939, who went overseas in England. If you're captured in Dieppe, if you stayed on beyond that time, and many did, and fought after that time, there's a bond between us that uh, I can't express. Words fail me. I'm no longer articulate enough to say how I feel, and I know my feelings are shared by so many others, really. And I, this is, I, I can't be more honest, more straightforward than, than saying that uh, these guys I love, and I love the regiment. As cornball as it sounds, this is my regiment, and these are my friends. The young soldiers today, uh, I can see right now, I can feel my eyes getting a little bit bleary, but I'm so proud of these young troops today, and uh, God bless them, huh? all the way. All the way. <laughs>